Hi, my name is Lisa Ray, and I am the Android lead at Genius. I'm going to go really fast today because I only have 10 minutes. This is an entire new framework introduced last year at IGO, but I'll do my best. So, data binding, what is it? Um, generally, it's a framework to connect your model and your UI, either once or persistently. It's also a lot of XML tips and tricks that I have been hurting for in the entire time I've been developing for Android. So I hope that in these 10 minutes I can go over both. So when we all started developing Android, we learned that Java is for your logic, and ideally, all of your presentation goes in your XML template. This would be the ideal world. However, we found out that Android, as it comes out of the package, literally does not let you declare even some simple layouts in XML. Um, there are lots of Java setters in the XML equivalent, set typeface, uh, some of these new support libraries, set scrim color, um, set load with overview mode, that's definitely something that has to do with appearance, but you can't set it in XML. And as for dynamic layouts, XML is pretty flexible. We have this align with parent if missing, but it's still not enough. You generally still have to do Java setup for any dynamic layout. And there's also a lot of boilerplate. Even if you set up your full XML template, you have to do find view by ID, you have to cast the result. I hear this was so annoying, it inspired somebody in the audience to create an entire library called Butterknife. You also have to connect your model to your view. Generally, you don't have an entirely static app. You download a model from the internet, and then you want to load it into your template. So you have to unpack your model into its fields and set them on the view. And finally, if you change anything from user input, from updates, from, uh, remote updates, you have to keep track of your updates and then update the appropriate parts of the view, which is complicated, hard to get right, two things we don't like in programming. Enter data binding, and you would think something that promises to fix these, probably using something dirty like reflection. Well, it's not. It's generating Java code, generated compile time, and it uses bitwise flags to mark which views are dirty and need to be updated. And it takes one traversal, maps out all of the views, so you don't have to go through one again and again doing find view by ID. So it's very efficient. And sorry preview of my awesome UI. Um, so according to the engineer I spoke with, he says its performance is equivalent to the best handwritten Java code. That's quite a claim, but it's certainly better than my handwritten Java code. <laughs> so here is a UI mocked up to demonstrate this. We have a hairless cat. This is a dating app for pets. You can vote them up and down. You can message them if you like them. You can see what they look like and you can see their name. All you need to date someone, really. Um, <laughs> so all the setup for this particular view would have to be done in Java. You have to find the views. You have to set the title. This is a collapsing toolbar layout. Um, you have to set a custom font. You have to set the button colors, because up vote, down vote, you don't know that until you get a piece over. And you have to load and set the image. So after data binding, this is the sum total of your Java code for this layout. You're going to set the content view, and then you're going to set a model object called pet. And the XML looks like this. Uh, your old layout goes right in there. You're surrounding it with layout tags and this data tag, which is new. And then your model object, which I've called pet, is going to go there. And that's all you do to your layout. So data binding takes any layout called pet.xml, the one we set up there, it generates petbinding.java. And then anything you've named in there, it saves those as petbinding.image.title.upvote, any reviews that you've given IDs. But for the large part, it eliminates the need for find view by ID entirely. And so for ex how does it do this? If you were using an existing attribute, like this one, app title equals a string, this would be for a static app. For data binding, you just say, I want this to be equal to my pet's name. And there may not be pet.name, but there's pet.getName, which is the Java setter. So as long as you follow standard Java guidelines, data binding will just figure it out. You can use shortcuts like this. 
Now, there are some Java setters, as I mentioned earlier, do not have any XML attributes. Well, data mining creates them. So in this case, I know that I have upvoted Tinkerbell because she's lovely. However, there's no Android selected attribute, but I'm making one. In this case, app is just a namespace that I made up. And I can say, if my vote is equal to an upvote, set it selected. And data binding looks for something on view called set selected. It finds it, because there's this Java setter. And this just works. Now, image URL. Suppose this is an image view. Um, I think we all know pretty well there is no attribute on an image view called image URL, because that would make our life too easy. <laughs> but in this case, we can write this. Um, we can write it by creating a binding adapter where we say that we would like to create a custom namespace and we'd like the attribute to be image URL. And we pick the view we'd like to bind and whatever we want to pass in, in this case the string URL. And then I'm using the library Glide to load this image into my image view, and then you never need to load a hairless cat in Java code ever again. You can put this for every one of your views. You can load the image in XML. And as for custom attributes, you can make ones that do not exist as setters. You can just make up whatever you want. In this case, an example that's been pretty popular is typeface. So Tinkerbell, I've written this in a custom font. And here's an example of a binding adapter that will let me set the typeface in the XML. So I can write app font, and then here I take in a text view and a font name. I get it from my cache because you are using a cache for your typefaces. And you just set it on your text view. Done. You can do this in XML now. So for the collapsing toolbar layout, we can do the same thing for collapsed title typeface and expanded title typeface. This font is actually called Lobster. So same kind of idea here. So I mentioned that you can do persistent binding. So this is still one-way binding, model to view, but it means that every time your model changes, your view is updated. And it doesn't just update your whole view, it can only update the parts that have actually changed. So it's quite efficient. The easiest way to do this is to have the fields of your model object implement obse um, be observable fields. And there are observable ints, observable strings, etc. And in this case, you'll use the observable fields own getters and setters to access it. And that means that when you change that field, the, the views, the view parts that depend on it will be automatically updated. Personally, I found the second way is easier for me. You can have your model class extend base observable, another class that comes in the data binding library. And then once you, you annotate everything that might change, all the getters and bindable, and then when you change something that might affect them, you call notify change. Seems like it might be more complicated, but say like the title is four strings that are all concatenated. When you change one of them, you might want to notify that the title changed. So if you have a complicated view model, I find this easier. All right, so I promised XML tips and tricks. Quickly, here are some of the things you can do now in XML that you couldn't do before. Before, I think we've seen a lot of this. If your pet object isn't null, then set the title to pet.get name. Otherwise, you'll throw in a pointer exception. Using data binding, no more null pointer exceptions. If pet is null, it will set name to the default, which is null, and your text view will be empty. Pretty cool. Also. If you have a name object and it has a first and last name, you can go as many deep as you want in this, and there will still be no null pointer exceptions. Pretty cool. Um, you can evaluate simple expressions in your XML. Please don't go too bonkers with this, but a little bit of it can really be helpful. For example, selected vote equal upvote. Pretty reasonable. Um, or you can do drawable right. If it's a cat, put a cat, or sorry, this is supposed to be a dog, but. Uh, material icons only have a pig. <laughs> um, <laughs> or you can do two times margin. No more like demand two underscore times underscore margin. 
uh, padding red equals margin plus image width. You know, simple things, but it's a huge deal. Uh, you can also overwrite Android attributes. This is pretty unusual because the support library has done a great job on most of these, but there are a couple gaps. In this case, one that got me was indeterminate tint. I have a progress bar. My app supports back to 14. I want it to pink. Well, tough shit. Well, I can say, whatever, I know what I want to do. I'm going to overwrite Android indeterminate 10. Every time I put this in my XML, I want you to call my binding adapter. And I want to use a 10. And now this just works. So uh, someone asked me, why is rehearsing? This will work on all platforms. It won't just call it for ones below API 21. And finally, includes can now replace a lot of what custom views used to do. Custom views are amazing. I used to be a custom view queen, but you have to write custom attributes. There's a ton of boilerplate. Now, because you're passing a model object into a layout, anywhere I've said, this is how you lay out a pet, I can put it in a family, I can put it in a menagerie, I can put it in a zoo, whatever I want. I drop this include in, and all of a sudden, this pet object is laid out completely. So that could be pretty useful. Uh, the elephant in the room here is that there has not been a official announcement that data binding is out of beta. However, I have it on good authority that now that data binding is included and builds with Gradle in the normal way with the rest of Android Studio, it is stable and it is safe. And we have been using this at Genius um, in production for about eight months with no issues. And because the code is generated at compile time, you can be sure that what you test is what you ship. So it's quite safe, and if you are interested, I would say it's a good time to dip your feet in. Uh, speaking of Android Studio, there is now great all integration. There's syntax highlighting, there's code completion, and you can view and debug all of the generated code, which is pretty useful. So, how do I get started? You add these three lines to your build.gradle file, and you can get going. So I hope you have fun with it, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. Cool. Thank you, guys.